Velkommen og god dag alle sammen. Welcome back to the channel on the series where I tell you about the translation and real meaning behind all of the deities uh, from the Norse myths. Um, so when we do this, uh, the myths don't seem like a bunch of crazy fairy tales for kids, but they are just stories that explain nature and the cosmos in the world. Um, so I just made a video about Ymir, and today we are speaking about some of his kin that came after him. Uh, Bergelmir, who was the youngest, then Thrudgelmir, who was his father, and Örgelmir, who was his grandfather. So, so these were the three earliest giants that uh, walked the world. Uh, and did our ancestors believe this? Did our ancestors believe that these three giants were born when Ymir made his armpits have sex, and then he gave birth to him that way, and then they just wandered the world and, and gave birth to each other like that? Well, let's see. As usual, we will start with the translation and etymology of these uh, uh, gods or deities. Uh, so the translation translation in Old Norse is debated by scholars a little bit on these three, but they do all agree on the common part that each of these words share, and that's the word gelmir. And uh, that means basically yeller or roarer or bellower. It's connected to uh, someone that's creating a, a great noise or, or sound or, or even energy. Um, some people look at it as. Um, that's the main tr translation, the meaning of the word gelmir. Uh, but there are some other scholars who translate Gilmir as a draft, like a, like a rough draft, like an early draft of something, like uh, the original that is being formed before something is uh, completed, finished. Um, so I'm going to go in a bit deep on these uh, uh, words here because it, it is debated, so I'm sorry if it's a bit boring, but some of these translations are, are uh, kind of... Uh, Kind of weird and we're not quite sure but i want to give you the best info possible so i'm going to cover it all uh, first we will translate the oldest of these beings the giant uh, the grandfather um, so most people agree that this one means sand gravel or rock or mineral uh, that first part of it and then the gelmir of course means yeller or bellower so it would mean sand gravel or rock bellower or mineral bellower or something like that um, some others translate it as um as uh, soil that first part of the word there out um, a draft of soil so the early versions of soil before there was anything else um, when it was being created there, the first early days of that. Um, also note that uh, some believe that Örgelmir uh, is just another name for Ymir, um, but we're not quite sure about that, so um, that's, that's um, just what it seemed like from most of the experts there. So, on to the... Okay, so this is the second one. This is the son of Örgelmir. His name is Thrudgelmir. Um, and again, most people on this one agree with it pretty well too. And that uh, that means uh, the power, that Thrud, it means like power or energy. So it would mean power yellower, energy bellower, or something like that. Um, and again, some people um, translate this as to mean some sort of draft. So like a draft of power. So the early origins of power power and energy um, so that's that's what that one there is on um, then then on to the third and this one is the youngest the grandson uh, and uh, now this one is quite a bit debated so I'm going to put a few of the options up here that people have uh, come up with um, some of the experts so mountain yeller is one translation uh, fruit bellower or plant bellower um, another one here is seed bellower some people translate that uh, as, as, as meaning seed that first part of the word um, and another one of course the draft of seeds was uh, was one of the options that people look at like the earliest form of seeds so all through the different translations, uh, these are a little bit different, but we can start to see a connection here when we look at all three of these in a row, when we look at grandfather, father, and son. So you, as you know, Ymir directly translated means sound. So watch my video on Ymir, uh, that link is in the description, I released it just a few days ago. Uh, but it seems, um, going over it quickly, that our ancestors maybe had some knowledge of the Big Bang, or at least some sort of humming noise. Uh, they knew that sound was present in the universe before anything else existed. Um, then, as the minerals and gases and liquids start to get pushed around by the sound waves, they clump together and start to create the rock matter that becomes our planet. And that is Örgelmir. 
used the rock matter, the earliest forms of rock matter and minerals that uh, were there before everything else. Then his son, the thing that came next, was um, power, that's Trudgilmir, um, power and energy that started to develop, and things like electricity, gravity, uh, heat, and other uh, powering things like that. Uh, then came the first forms of bacteria, or, or, or seeds, that started to develop. This is what Bergimir represents. Uh, he represents the earliest forms of a seed, the earliest little seeds of life, which eventually developed into <laughs> plants and more life uh, over millions of years, um, and then things always um, branching out from that. So how incredible is that? <laughs> Did our primitive barbarian pagan ancestors have some knowledge of this? Did they have some knowledge of the early days of the earth? And, you know, it, it sounds just too crazy to be true. Is it just one big coincidence in these myths? Or did our ancestors know something that we don't? So I'm not saying you guys have to believe me about all this. Um, I admit a lot of it is too crazy to believe. How could our ancestors have any knowledge of this? How the earth was formed in the early days of life developing um, without all the technology that we have today? Well, we know for sure that uh, the pagan Norse had many, many different rituals that were practiced in order to gain knowledge and wisdom. Uh, the myths and the Eddas actually explain a lot of these. Um, this is not fake news, but the scholars are in pretty general agreement that many of the Eddas describe in certain parts um, rituals that were meant to initiate people or bring wisdom to the practitioner um, kind of a spiritual journey and and it's not any different than any other tribal people around the world um, even tribal people that are around the world today practicing some of these things some rituals that you maybe have heard of there are things like you know meditation ayahuasca ceremonies uh, lucid dreaming or other spiritual journeys like that these all count these are all things that you've probably heard of and maybe even participated in yourself that people are doing today that are aimed at achieving some sort of awakening or new wisdom and the Norse pagans also had rituals like this, which I will go over in this channel. They believed that they could go into the realm of the dead, or other spiritual realms, or even other dimensions, possibly, to bring them knowledge and power. So, don't you think that it may be possible that people received some sort of vision that offered them a glimpse into the past and how the universe and Earth was created? <laughs> now, I am not some pot-smoking hippie that likes to take magic mushrooms and talk about all these crazy things, and I don't want you guys to be either. All I'm saying is that I like to keep an open mind and be open to the idea that our pagan ancestors had ways to gain wisdom about nature and the universe uh, without the technology that we have today. That's all I'm saying. Uh, so that's all I'll speak about for this video. I'll go on to more deities and later ones. Let me know if you guys have any theories about Bergilmir, uh, Thrudgilmir, and the Erugilmir. Uh, have you heard any better theories around? Do you have any ideas or theories that make sense yourself? Let me know in the comments. That's why I make these videos. It's so we can have more good brains in the world thinking about these things so we can come up with the most logical uh, theories together and advance our people. So uh, that's about it for today. We see you next time.